Good morning and welcome to St. Gertrude and our celebration of the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today is also Mission Sunday, so we have a special prelude. And I have to say, I feel, I've been feeling badly about all of you being here and not being able to sing. So I finally came up with something special for this week uh, that is interactive. I'm going to need you to participate in our prelude by doing some clapping. Um, I'll need you to clap on the intro and on the refrain. And what's going to happen is you're going to hear uh, Nicholas on the trombo trombone and myself play a little riff, and then after we finish, you clap twice quickly, and it goes like this. Uh, all right, so let's try that, okay? Let's, uh, myself and Jay will help you with the clapping. to be witnesses. Uh, you should read the e-bulletin this week. Kevin wrote a beautiful article on what it means to be a witness. So this song emphasizes uh, our role. We are to be active participants, active witnesses, active missionaries to all. So as we sing those words, uh, those phrases, we will be your witnesses to all of the world. We'll clap. We will be your witnesses to all the world. Um, and then you don't clap on the verses. Jay will bring you in with the clapping uh, so you won't be confused. All right? One, two, three, four. <laughs> So please rise as we, and join us as we sing our entrance hymn for the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. 
Table of Plenty. Gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we are reminded that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the author of our faith. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God our Father, Gifts without measure flow from your goodness to bring us your peace. Our life is your gift. Guide our life's journey, for only your love makes us whole. Keep us strong in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord.
to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing the hand of the Lord feeds us all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly for those him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. 
The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first sentence of today's gospel, we hear that Jesus heard of the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, and he immediately withdrew to a deserted place by himself. In other words, he went into mourning. Part of mourning is always Depression. Depression is also the number one illness in our nation. Depression usually forces us in on ourselves. Many therapists believe that part of that self-examination can be a good thing when it leads us to an awareness we otherwise may never have gained. But for the most part, depression is destructive and it can be very debilitating. I think perhaps there is a kind of remedy for depression present in these same readings. The first reading from Isaiah reminds us God always provides and takes care of us. So perhaps we need to dial down the feeling that the weight of the world is upon our shoulders and it's all up to me to do whatever. We're not in charge, even though we like to pretend we are, huh? We're not in charge. God is in charge. Second, St. Paul reminds us nothing can separate us from the love of God, which begs the question, why do so many Catholics live in the constant fear that they're going to hell? We're going to heaven, people, huh? That's the next stop in this journey. Paul couldn't be clearer Nothing will separate us from the love of God poured out in Christ Jesus. I think we should stop spending so much energy worrying about going to hell and use it for more productive things. And number three, when we pay attention, like the disciples, we will learn that we will always leave with more than enough. It isn't a mistake that when all had been fed, there were 12 baskets left over, one to convince each of the disciples, huh? It is in giving that we come to be fully 
who we were created to be. And in freely giving all that we have, we finally gain all that has value. Nothing so helps depression than when we become aware of those who are in much greater need than I am. I encourage you as you leave here today to ask yourselves, with what surplus am I living? With what surplus do I begin every day? Do I thank God for what I have, or I, do I still obsess about what I don't have? And perhaps the most important part, no matter what I have, am I willing and am I sharing it with others? Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became flesh. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of God's promise that we will delight in rich fare, we present our prayers with trust in God's faithfulness. that all those served by the missionary work of the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity grow in hopefulness and faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national leaders move beyond the limitations of party affiliation to address the needs of the most vulnerable especially those who are unemployed or uninsured. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we answer the call to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the abundant love that God has for each of us sustains and guides us as we work to build the beloved community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That inspired by our faith, we bring compassion, justice, and hope to those in darkness and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Congressman John Lewis of Georgia, and for the intention of this Mass, 
Randy Cruz. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers we bring in the name of Jesus, our hope and our peace. Amen. stand and pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Merciful Lord, make holy these gifts, and let our spiritual sacrifice make us an everlasting gift to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show us a Father's love. Your Holy Spirit, dwelling within us, gives us on earth the hope of unending joy. Your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, is the foretaste and promise of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. With thankful praise in company with the angels, we glorify the wonders of your power. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, 
Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Gertrude, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Francis, our Bishop Blaise, with the bishops, the clergy, and religious, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever.
the announcement before communion, please wait in your place in your pew until the usher releases you and instructs you how to come forward for communion. The usher will spray your hands with sanitizer, please work it into your hands until it is dried. Don't touch your face, clothing, or any other surface. Please receive communion from the priest on the same side of the church in which you are sitting. As you approach, after you've sanitized your hands, receive the host in your hand only. Step six feet to the side, remove one strap of your mask, receive communion, put the mask back on, and return to your seat. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, you give us the strength of new life by the gift of the Eucharist. Protect us with your love and prepare us for eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. There are just four announcements today. There is a second collection today. It's the annual summer mission appeal. Please be generous. Your gifts can be placed. There is a, a brown box for the second collection on the same table up front here. Uh, gifts to the mission appeal can go there. We are still in need of more volunteers for our COVID teams, the setup and greeter team, and the cleanup team. Please check the parish newsletter or the parish website for more information, or you can check with one of the volunteers right after Mass. Third, we're happy to have Father Mike back after his surgery, and he's doing well, so we're grateful for that. And finally, and I'm always so disappointed when we can't sing, but I'm especially disappointed this morning that we can't sing because Tuesday's Mary Claire's birthday. I think she's turning 36, so happy birthday, Mary Claire. <laughs> The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a great week, everyone.